Hello everyone, my name is Michael SK and welcome back to Steins Gate Zero. In the last episode, things took an interesting turn. Not only was Daru out on a date, which is really hard to believe, uh, but Okabe got uh, betrayed by the one person that I really would never have thought he'd be betrayed by, is Maho. But she was acting really weird. I have no idea why. So I guess we'll uh, read on here. I think we're unconscious. I think that's what happened. Uh, so now, Maho knows everything. She even knows where the fucking time machine is, which is really not good news. It's not really... I, I don't know why he did that. He, he really just fell for those, for those crocodile tears. But uh, let's read on here, and uh, let's see what happens. When I woke up, my throat hurt. Oh, shit. All right. <gasps> Not sure what happened there, and wow, is Okabe dying. I tried to cover my mouth with my hands, but something was keeping them from moving. I opened my eyes and saw that I was sitting in some kind of chair with my head facing downwards. I slowly raised my head. My hands were tied to the armrests with zip ties. When I tried to break out, the ties dug into my skin and hurt very badly. I tried looking around. It was a room I'd never seen before. There were machines that looked like they belonged in the operating room of a hospital. But the wall was also lined with monitors, like some kind of guard room or control room. I couldn't see any windows, so I had no idea where I was. <laughs> Man, we sound terrible. My throat hurt when I tried to talk. And then I remembered that Maho had almost killed me. Why had she done that? I felt more confused than angry. Oh no. Rintaro. Come on. We know who this is, game. You don't have to hide it. It's quite obvious. I heard footsteps and saw a wavering shadow beneath the dim, fluorescent lights in front of me. I knew that voice. <sighs> How can you not know that voice? You hear it once and you know it forever. Oh, thanks. That's quite helpful in this dire time. When I looked again, I saw that he wasn't alone. There were several men behind him in black suits. They were looking at me without saying a word. All of them were holding guns. They looked like MIBs and reminded me of the foreigners I'd almost ran into at Daru's shop six months ago. Or was it the same group? There were a lot of things I wanted to ask, but more than anything, I wanted to know why Dr. Leskinen wasn't helping me. Of course, the first thing that came to mind was the obvious answer. It was Dr. Leskinen who had put me here, and Maho had captured me under his orders. But I didn't want to think about that. So all I could ask was a stupid question like that. He didn't answer me, but he showed me a self-satisfied smile. I could feel alarm bells going off in my head. I was getting more suspicious of Dr. Leskinen. <音声><音声><音声><音声> 
私がこうすべきだと判断した魔法から君の持つ情報について聞いてねヒアジャオさんはどこですホテルで休んでるんじゃないかなヒアジャオさんは俺から情報を引き出すために近づいてきたんですか最初はそうではなかったよ結果的にはそうなったけれどねあなたも俺に親切にしてくれたのもそういう打算があったからですかあなたは一体何者なんですまあまあ落ち着けなさい前に教えただろう科学者たるもの常に冷静でなければいけない興奮していいのは実験が成功した時だけだと<笑> Instead of feeling calm, Dr. Leskinen's attitude was pissing me off You could feel it, or you could really hear it in, in、uh, Okabe's voice. He is just. He's been betrayed. After, after everything that we thought、uh, that was building up, all, all this good, all these great people, we just stabbed them in the back, and everything has gone down the shitter. I really feel for Okabe. He just can't catch a break. I felt betrayed. There was rage, frustration, sorrow, and a lot of other feelings all mixed together as I gritted my teeth. Dr. Leskinen ignored me and gave a brief order in English to the other men. They left the room. Only Dr. Leskinen and I remained. Sate, Rintaro. What does she know? Most of the no she got on a Hanas Yoshio. Most of the she got on. It was then that I remembered the other world line that I'd been sent to. Shimoyama had told me that an American organization had demanded that I be turned over. But Dr. Leskinen only chuckled. Wow. That even the CIA couldn't get and then sold it. We've heard of Stratford before. That was in quite a, quite a few routes ago. The result was the destruction of the CIA's reputation. And at the same time, the total reorganization of Russia's military strategy. I'd even heard rumors that during the Gulf and Iraq wars, they'd obtained information about the warring countries faster than anyone and spread it as needed. The world's governments supposedly called them the Shadow CIA. ね。ではなぜ人間同士の不毛な戦争がいつまでも終わらないのかわかるかなレンタロウそれはね情報のせいなんだよ人間は誰しもあるコミュニティに属している軍隊だ
個人個人は自主的に行動しているつもりでいても実は全ての脳はそのコミュニティに流布されている情報によってつながっているそして一つの群れとして生きることを余儀なくされているのさ例を挙げてみようそうだなうん例えは悪いがヨーロッパのある国が行った人類史上最悪の大虐殺は何も中世の魔女狩りの時代に起こった出来事じゃない20世紀も半ばすでに原子爆弾すら作られていたそんな時代の話なんだよしかもその国は当時最先端の文明国家の一つだったその国の指導者の資質問題は歴史学者に委ねるとして実際の現場で虐殺に手を染めた人々のことを君は知っているかい彼らはただの人殺しの猿だったのだろうか違う彼らはごくありふれた普通の人たちだった脳科学的に見ても何一つ以上の見られない普通の脳だったはずだところがひとたびそこにとある最悪の情報が伝播すると途端に彼らの脳は平気で虐殺を行う軍隊と化してしまう最悪の情報これは我々の使命なのだ我々は正しいのだだから使命に従わないものは悪なのだそういう情報さ何が言いたいんですか人間の脳という脆い軍隊のための情報はきちんと制御できるものが管理しなくてはならないということだよそれがストラテジックフォーカスの最終目的だ私はそれに共感して脳科学者でありながらエージェントとして協力している分かってくれたかな Not really. 分かりませんそんなのよくある映画の悪役のヘリクツだ結局あなたは金で情報を売買してるだけじゃないですか俺が情報の宝庫だって言いましたよねタイムマシンの情報を一体どの国に売るつもりですアメリカ中国それとも中東やアフリカの紛争地域ですかそのすべてだよ。Oh, you fucker. <笑> I don't like this Dr. Leskinen. He's evil. Leskinen shrugged his shoulders and quietly laughed. 核兵器と同じさ。抑止力としてあらゆる国に必要だと思っている。タイムマシンは核兵器なんかとはわけが違うそれが使われたかどうか誰も気づかないもしかしたら使った本人さえも気づかないうちに世界は改変されてしまうんだ抑止力になんかならないどの国も誰がどう世界線をいじったのかすら感知できないまま狂ったように改変を続けるでしょう永遠にその通りタイムマシーンは核兵器以上にデリケートだだからこそ君の君たちの能力が必要となる君は確かリーディングスタイナーと名付けたそうだね God, it's weird hearing it from someone else like him That's weird Trying to take my jacket off There we go どうやら新型農園とほぼ同じ症例だとか。That's right. Leskinen was researching the new encephalitis too. 我々は
新型脳炎患者が過去改変を感知できるのかもしれないというところまでは突き止めていてねずっとその確証を求めていたんだ世界中の諜報機関も同じ躍起になって調べているああああああああ。But I was naive, too naive. Luskinen and Stratford's goal was to gather people with reading Steiner and study them. Saki Maho Kara, Kimi no Tokuhitsu Subeki no Ryokono Koto wo, Shosai ni Kikase te monatta yo. Honlai Kimi Kara wa, Chris no Ushina wareta Seika ni Tsuite Kiki da Sereba, Sore de Ito Motte Ita ga. 新型農園の情報まで出てくるとは君は最高だよここでも我々は世界に対して一歩先んじることができる<笑>というか君はどうしてもっと早く私にその能力のことを話してくれなかったんだいそうすれば君の友人キャツメの脳もあそこまでいろいろといじくらないで済んだのに。カツミ、カツミナケセ。Did he mean Fubuki? それに、君が話してくれていたなら、魔法の脳に施術をすることもなかったんだ。Oh no。ヒアジョさんまで I mean, she did look very. Or she was acting weird. Yeah. Was that why she was acting so weird? She was really different. I felt hatred for and fear of. The man in front of me. I couldn't believe that this was the same man I'd respected so much. Reading Steiner, Hoyu Shano, no, Shirabereba. Moto, Iroirona Hakanga Ardaro. Sorewo, time machine to set de Ureba. Sekai no Gunji Perans wa Kanzen ni Tamotaler. Senso mo Kaihi de Girunda. No, no, that's not going to happen at all. People are going to abuse time machines and the information that you sell. There will be no balance, and war will be everywhere. Leskinen's mannerisms hadn't changed a bit, even as he spoke of these horrifying things. He spoke of these insane things in the same manner that Maho once described as like a mischievous child's. Oh, yeah. ただ君のことを知るうちに純粋に興味を持ったのは本当だ今でも思っているよ私の下で研究員になってくれたら嬉しいとねだがそれとこれとは別の話なんださっき言っただろう
君は今この時点で合衆国大統領に匹敵するレベルの重要人物だと私個人の考えよりも我々の仕事を優先せざるを得ないんだ未来の人類の平和のために残念だリンターロそして楽しみでもある君の持つ情報の全貌を私は早く知りたくてうずうずしているよすごくいいおろ You know, I really like Leskinen. I was under the impression that he was a good guy, even after the suspicions I had for him. But all along, all along, he really was. He really was evil. Fuck, man. そうすれば、君が不良の事故で死んでも、君の記憶は残る。<笑>ああ、心配しなくてもいい。もとより殺すつもりなどないよ。人間というのは、エンデウスよりもセキュリティが甘いんだ。苦痛を味わうと。それから逃れるために簡単に情報を漏らす秘密保持のセキュリティなどないに等しい拷問が通用しないエメテウスより生身の君の相手をする方がずっと楽だ記憶データを取るのはバカだと思ってくれたまえ例えば君が拷問に耐えきれず精神崩壊を起こしてしまったとしても近い将来記憶データを君の脳にダウンロードして回復させることもできるからね君も私の講演に参加していたから知っているだろう<笑>まず記憶データの取得その後で君自身からいろいろなことを教えてもらう予定だ忙しくなるぞさあリラックスしてそうでないとデータを正常に取得できないからねレスキにあんたはそんな顔をしても誰も助けにはかないここは我々ストラットフォーが管理する場所だからね我々以外には誰も知らない誰もだ<笑> I was too stunned to think there was nowhere to run my knees shook in terror as I imagined what was about to happen to me maybe it would have been better to die and then I felt sick as I remembered that I was fated not to die until 2025 If no amount of torture could kill me, this was literally hell. Isn't this very similar to how we、uh, ended up in the first world line? With our memories sort of just being downloaded? But we never really figured out what happened? Her head hurt. Maho knelt down, closed her eyes, and bit her lips to shut out the pain. There was an annoying noise in her head that wouldn't go away. It made the headache worse. No matter how much she covered her ears, she couldn't block it out. She wanted to scream from the pain, but she held it in because she thought it would only make her headache worse. She could hear a voice mixed in with, her, with the noise. It was Dr. Leskinen's. Hey, Kai, Maho. Kimi wa donna shudan wo tskatta demo. Rintaro o kabe ga kakaete iru kimitsu wo abakunta. でないと彼を殺さなくてはいけなくなるそんなのは嫌だろいやいくす君もウィンターローのことを随分と気にかけていたじゃないか散々私やクリスが煽ったからね君にその気などなくてもついつい意識してしまうものさ
それが人の心理だ彼を助ける意味でも彼の持つ情報を引き出してほしいそうしたら私はリンタロウを我が研究室に無条件で迎え入れてあげてもいい魔法彼について知り得たことは全て私に報告しなさい彼の未来は君の手にかかっていると言ってもいい The voice and the noise were extremely unpleasant. She couldn't really understand what the voice was saying. She could hear him speaking, but her brain refused to understand the meaning of the words. But it didn't matter either way. Maho had done something terrible to Okabe Rintaro. She'd sold him out to Dr. Luskin and Aunt Stratford. And the fact that she knew it just made her guilt worse. She wanted to disappear from the world altogether. Maho san? She was on a busy street in Akihabara in early summer. She was leaning on the side of a building in the shade when she heard someone call her name. Oh, hey, it's Mayuri with her updated sprite. Mayuri san. I don't know why they just didn't do that earlier. That would have made a lot more sense. She didn't expect to see Mayuri here, so she didn't know how to respond. She just looked back and stared. <laughs> Maho must be in, like, just the worst position. Maho went completely still. Mayuri's innocent question reminded her of her own stupidity and cowardice. Do. Ste. Her voice was shaking. Okari. Kino kara renna kutska nakute. Ochi ni mo kaete nai si. Dewa mo te nai si. Well, Daru knows the, the situation, sort of. I mean, he was kind of there when we were almost, you know, screwed over. So, I, I, I don't think he should be the one saying that Mayuri is worrying too much. There's dangers out there. It was still only July, but it was pretty hot. She'd been wandering around all of Akihabara in this heat. Mayuri Shina was a kind, pure hearted girl, and was the impression that Maho had, or that was the impression that Maho had. She would never betray someone, or get jealous, or let someone use her. Mayuri leaned forward. She bowed deeply. And then she realized. And then she wished she hadn't. Mayuri was in love with Okabe Rintaro. A dull pain ran down her temples. And everyone loves Okabe. She could hear the noise in her head. Just tell Mayuri everything. And then have this innocent girl tell you how horrible you are. Maybe you'll feel better then. The idea raced through Maho's mind, even as she knew it was wrong. She tried to hold back her headache as she opened her mouth. Yube, Shinya, Okabe san to issho datta no. So, nan 
ですかそれであのオクリンは今どこに Maho ignored her question. オカベさんは昨日私にこんな話をしてくれたわ。No. 彼が経験してきた別の世界においてシーナ・マユリさんあなたは何度も死んだんですって。Don't tell her. Nando Yatemo Tasker Ariza Anata was s i n i t s u k e t a You can't tell her this. Sono Akumano Yona Loop Kara Nakedas Tameni Anata Sku Tameni. It was like another person was speaking using Maho's mouth. Okabe san. クリスのことを犠牲にしたんだって見殺しにしたんだってそんな話をしてくれた<笑>タイムマシンを作りクリスをもう一度救おうとすればまたあの頃に客戻りしてしまう You're hurting her But the words didn't stop. Okabe san wa sono koto o hidoku o sorete iru. Anata o hissi de mamoro to ste iru. Koko wa anata o mamoru tame ni hoka no ooku no mono o gisei ni ste sentak sareta sekai na no yo. Anata wa. m a i d i was too shocked to speak. She looked like she was about to cry at any instant. <sighs> Suddenly, m a i d i turned around and started to walk away with slumped shoulders. Even from behind her, Maho could tell that she was having trouble walking straight. The truth was so cruel that confronting it threatened her very identity. That's how it seemed to Maho. <sighs> Maho was still in a trance. It felt like there was a fog covering everything she saw. It was all out of focus, like a mirage. If someone told her it was a dream, she would easily believe it. The same was true of her own mind. She knew she should feel worse about what she just told Mayuri, but while she realized she'd hurt her, she felt no emotion. That was probably why she was able to say something so awful. And then the phone in her pocket began to vibrate. She looked and saw it was from, Am from Amadeus, from k i r i s u She felt a small, thin needle prick her paralyzed heart. She couldn't answer it. How could she? She stared at the LCD screen, unable to move her fingers even a centimeter. She couldn't let Kirisu see her like this. But even so, it felt wrong to just stay here. Maho decided to go after Mayuri. But by the time she made it to the overpass, Mayuri was already gone. Since she was right in front of the station, there were many people around, and it would have been impossible to find her. She looked down over the station from the overpass and whispered to herself. And then she saw someone in a distinctive outfit approaching her. They were wearing a black motorcycle suit and black full face helmet despite the heat. She thought it might have been a cosplayer, but instead of trying to take pictures, the people nearby were avoiding them. 
Given a closer look, the person appeared to be a woman. Even Maho could tell that she had an incredible proportions. The woman walked under the overpass and vanished from Maho's view. And then she came up the stairs. And she came right toward Maho. Maho quickly looked away, like the other pedestrians, and tried to run away. But before she could, the woman in the motorcycle suit ran over and wordlessly grabbed her hand. There was a pain in her cheek. She was caught off guard and staggered to the ground. At first, she didn't know what had happened. She rubbed her aching cheek, and only then did she realize that the woman in the motorcycle suit had slapped her. Oh, uh, yep, that's Kagari. She could hear a muffled female voice from within the helmet. Uh, yikes. Her voice was very calm, which only terrified Maho more. Because she was wearing a helmet, Maho couldn't read her facial expression. Since the visor was lowered, she couldn't even see her eyes. Okay, we definitely know it's Kagiri. Like, it's 100 her. There's, there's no way it isn't her. There was no answer to her question. Instead, the woman looking up to the sky, as if she'd noticed something. Maho looked up too. For a moment, it seemed as if a black shadow crossed the windows of the building. She could hear a helicopter. It was close. How long it had it been there? She hadn't noticed it at all. And then she felt the air around her change. The pedestrians were all looking toward the station in fear and shock. She could hear people saying things like, What's that? Are they filming a TV show? Some kind of cosplay event? Something was going on at the station. Maho stood up and looked too. She found herself whispering the same thing as the others. There were two trucks painted a deep military green parked outside the station. Uh oh. <laughs> that doesn't look good. Men were coming out of them dressed in camo and carrying weapons. At first she thought it might have been the self-defense force, but the men weren't Japanese. It was hard to believe that what she was seeing was taking place in Japan. The men in camo disappeared into the alleyways as everyone watched from a safe distance. They were heading toward the radio building. Maho had heard from Rintaro yesterday that the time machine was there. That's not good. This is, like, the worst scenario. Or Russia, or perhaps another country's military. Were they here because Maho had told Leskinen what she'd learned from Nintoro? As soon as she thought, or as soon as that thought crossed her mind, she was hit with another terrible headache. <laughs> it was all her fault. Everything was her fault. Until a moment ago, everything had seemed so hazy, but now she felt crushed by overwhelming guilt. If Okabe was right, and the Third World War was going to begin here in Akihabara, it would be because she gave the information he shared with her to Stratford. She suddenly realized that the girl who threatened to kill her had run down the stairs and toward the station. Maho never did figure out who she was, but we did! And then her phone started to vibrate again. It was from Kirisu. She wanted to get away from the guilt, and so this time she picked up the phone. 